Hello, my friend. How you doing? Good How to are see you, you, Mr. Martin? Good to see you. Something tells me that your feet must be a little cold from that uh, long walk over here this morning, huh? Yeah, I ran pretty fast. Yeah? Pretty fast. Yeah. Your feet look a little cold. Yeah, especially those big suction cups down there I got. Yeah. How are you, sir? How you doing? How's How are you? everything? This is Chad, one of my students. Pleasure to meet you. Hi, I'm Art Bynes. Welcome to our show, Karate and You. Before we begin today's program, I'd like to explain a little bit about our show. As you know, Karate and You wasn't designed specifically just to promote United States of Black Cat Kempo Karate, but to promote all styles of the martial arts, so we may all unite in a common cause to help improve our country and help make it a happier, healthier, safer place in which to live. Today's show I'm sure you're going to find quite interesting because I have a good friend, a pioneer of the martial arts, a living legend of the martial arts. So without any further ado, turn on that VCR and we'll be right back. Hi, welcome back to Karate New. Today's show we're going to be covering a variety of techniques from uh, Master Ray Martin's Karate Studios, and uh, at this time it gives me great pleasure to introduce him to you. Uh, Art, how are you? I'm how excellent, you? I'm excellent. This is Master Ray Martin, and Ray is uh, the exalted ruler, Grand Puba, of Martin's Karate Studios no, over on Route 35 in Homedale. Yes. And uh, Ray's been training, I guess, uh, I'd rather martial arts. Why don't you yeah. tell him all about that? How long have you been training? Over 30 years. I think it's 31 years uh, this year. Wow. Uh, that's a while ago. Yeah, things have changed. Things, yeah, things have changed sure. a lot. A lot of karate schools opened up since that time. Well, I'll tell you, there's, uh, there seems to be a karate school on every corner now. Like pizzerias? Uh, yeah, you could say that. Just you like pizzerias say... in a lot of ways. Number one, some good pizza, some bad pizza. Yeah, 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 it's true. I think what has happened is that uh, years ago, uh, you didn't have as many karate schools or martial arts schools, but uh, there was a certain number of guys that taught, and perhaps uh, you know it was uh, a little bit better in some respects. Mm -hmm. uh, now you have uh, a great many schools, and the actual top level, everything always improves. Martial arts, baseball, boxing, everything always improves. But I think now perhaps uh, what the consumer should do is just take their time and go around from school to school, and don't just go to the school that's closest to you. Mm -hmm. you know, take your time, because if you're going to put your children in a martial arts school, you want to be sure it's a good school, that things are done properly, the basics are taught well. Because if the foundation isn't there, if you go to a school perhaps that uh, the teacher might be a little bit better, then they have to adjust it, and it's more difficult. So it's better in the beginning yeah. to have everything good foundation to start with. Yeah. And just be an educated consumer, well, basically, Art. I think the problem might be also lie that the general public thinks that Karate is a seasonal type of activity. They're not really, they don't really understand or comprehend, they don't have the knowledge of exactly what the martial arts is all about, that it, it actually prepares people to become successful in life, and there's a lot more to it than taking it for six or seven months. And uh, I think that, you know, that's something that you should be conscious of because wherever they go, the instructor is going to have a big impact on the child, or even an adult for that matter, a big influence. So they want to be real conscientious about what they're getting themselves involved with. You know, it's, it's not like uh, taking up, uh, you know, I'd, like tap dancing or jazz might be maybe nine months out of the year, you know, uh, or baseball is a seasonal activity. You know, karate is there. Once you get a taste of it and you digest it, it's there to stay. Well, I think uh, that uh, karate properly taught by a good instructor, good school, can be one of the most beneficial things that a child can do mm -hmm. in every aspect. The, the physical aspect of it is almost secondary to mm -hmm. what uh, it can do for them emotionally, yeah. the confidence, the things that come with that. And um, I mean, I truly, sincerely believe it. I've seen what karate can do for kids. They come in shy, they don't look at you when they talk to you, they have problems. All they really need is just a little self-esteem, Art. Mm -hmm. You just feel good about themselves and the other things just naturally flow from there. But if they don't have that, you know, they're going to have a problem with everything else the rest of their life. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's why we have the show, Ray, because we want to educate everybody, let them understand that this martial arts thing that they see in the movies, they see on TV, is not really what it's all about. You know, that's, that's yeah. really uh, the primitive part of it all, you know, developing the confidence, the self-esteem, the positive self-image, knowing that every day of a child's life or your child's life, they have to walk out into that real world out there, and knowing that a child has enough confidence, enough self-esteem to realize that you know when they eventually get approached by somebody with drugs, that they're not going to be influenced. They're going to have enough on the ball to say, "Hey, I don't need this drug thing. You know, I don't need to be accepted by this type of individual. I know who I am. I'm confident in who I am, and I'm on the road to success in life." And that's really what the martial arts is all about: teaching you how to set short-term, long-term goals. And you know, like we were saying before, when it comes down to picking a karate school, people have to be real conscientious about that. Real conscientious. 
very, very much you know, so. And, and uh, uh, it's, it's critical. It's mm -hmm. really, really critical. And there's, there's a lot of good karate schools around, mm -hmm. absolutely. But just, you know, be an educating consumer. Take mm -hmm. your time, watch, talk to the instructor, use common sense. Forget about the open yellow pages, all the exalted things that say, forget about all that. The most important thing is how well is a person being taught while they're on the mat. Mm -hmm. Everything else is secondary. And any, any adult can sit there and watch and make an intelligent judgment of how the child is being taught, how the instructor interacts, interacts you know, if they get the point across, and so on like that. So mm -hmm. it's, it's like anything else. You just have to take your time. Don't go just because one is five minutes away. No. Take your time. Go around a little bit and check things out. Pro and probably the best investment someone can make is the martial arts. Probably the most beneficial investment they can make, and they should really take the time out to educate themselves and make sure that they get into the right school. No question. No question, no question at all. Who are these handsome guys you got with you today? Well, this is one of my students. This is uh, Chad Anselowitz. Hey, Chad. How I'm are so, you? I, I'm sorry. Chad is behind. This is Steve oh, Anselowitz. Steve. How are you, Steve? How Pleasure. You Why don't you take and a little bow Chad. there? Hi, Chad. Chad how are you? Chad, Mr. Bynes. Pleasure. Take a little bow out there, Steve. Take a bow to the camera. There you go. People Good. get you. Actually, get acquainted uh, with you. Steve is one of my students. He takes karate and he takes grappling. And they always used to wrestle around at home, so he talked Chad into taking grappling. So Chad is now one of my grappling students. Mm -hmm. So give you a little idea of, you know, as we get into the techniques, why we always try and improve our technique. The better, more precise our technique is, the better we're able to handle somebody a little bit bigger. I mean, mm -hmm. look at Chad for a second. Look at Chad's size. God, he was a basketball. What do you weigh, 235? I mean, glad we got guys. I think you weigh more than 235. <laughs> I don't know about that. Maybe 240. That's a tall drink of water over there. <laughs> well, actually, Chad, Chad's not the biggest guy. Tommy is what about 295? 295, and I think Jimmy's like 255. Well, so. There's a whole. So how you know how could a little guy like me uh -huh. even stand a chance against these big guys unless you work to get your technique mm -hmm. as technically perfect as you can, and that's what we work on to get things. You know, that's the art of the martial arts. Okay. Are you going to use him right now, uh, or are you going to? No, actually, Chad, uh, we just, uh, he chauffeured Steve down. Uh -huh. So uh, he's just along, and uh, so we thought we'd just everybody see who Chad is. And Steve, we're going to use a little bit. OK. Well, let's okay. see what you got there. It's all yours, sir. Well. I'm just standing on the side here observing a little bit. I always like to steal technique from my guests and oh, okay. take it back home. All right. OK. Martial arts properly taught are like anything else. They're done in a systematic, progressive manner. You start off with your basics, and then you just work off from there. From the very basic, you walk in, you just teach a student just to punch, just from a natural stance, just stand there and punch like that. Go on, Stephen. Once they can do that, you put them in a straddle leg stance. Straddle leg stance, punch. This way here, out of boy. All you're doing is just teach them basically how to move their arms. Okay, stand up. Then once they can do that, you teach them different stances. Like this is what we call a natural stance. What he did before was a straddle leg stance. We have four basic stances. Next stance is a front stance. Set in a front stance, Stephen. Atta boy. And then he steps and executes a punch. Step and execute a punch. Good. Back. OK. Last basic stance is a back stance. Back stance. OK. Now from here, he learns to execute a punch by rotating his hips and getting his body into it, which is called a reverse punch. Reverse punch, Stephen. All right. OK. Back. Good. Once they have the basic stance as a basic punch, we teach them five basic blocks. Stand up, Stephen. Atta boy. Just a basic downward block. Ready? Downward block. One. Good. Move toward me. Inward block. Two. Good. Step back. Outward block. Good boy. Step forward. Knife hand block. Step back. Rising block. Very good. Step up. Once they get the basic techniques down with the blocks and stances, then we teach them the basic kicks. There's four basic kicks we teach. These cover most areas of self-defense and outside distance line. Let's say someone is coming straight forward. And Stephen was coming straight forward at me this way here. I would use what's called a front kick, where I kick forward like that. If I'm standing to the side, Steve comes in this way, I use what's called a side kick. Notice forward, more natural to kick forward. Stand to the side, more natural to kick to the side. If I'm standing this way, he comes behind me, I use what's called a back kick. Last kick we teach, turn around this way, Stephen, face the camera there. Oh boy. It's a round kick, coming around in circular motion, like that. So you teach them stationary first, and then you teach them with a the student moving a little bit. Back up a little bit, Steve. Oh boy. Fighting stance. Just do a, a stepping front kick. Stepping front kick. Ready? 
Good. Back up. Okay, slide up round kick. Go. Good boy, back. Straddle leg stance facing that way. Slide up side kick. Go. Good. Back. Okay, and last kick is uh, the back kick. We can also do it in the air fighting stance, Steve. All right? We can do it by spinning in like this. We can do a stepping across, jumping back. It depends upon the distance your opponent is from you as to what you do. Once the student gets the basic techniques down, then we start to do it in combinations. For instance, if I understand, Steve, right. maybe I throw a punch here, follow with a kick. Or before he did a straddle leg stance, well, I can do a straddle leg stance here, throw a back fist first, back fist comes first, followed with side kick. So your basic techniques are just starting to do moving. Then you can start to combine the techniques like you have your side kick, your hook kick, your round kick. Those techniques you can throw from the same position, the same chamber. So what you have here is this position here lets you throw a side kick, a round kick, or a hook kick. So for instance, if I want to throw a side kick, my leg will just flow into this chamber right into a side kick. The same chamber here just flows up. I can throw a round kick. Right? Or same chamber, I can throw a hook kick. What that does is by putting the chamber in the same place all the time, it's more difficult for your opponent to know what's happening. So as the chamber is there, it depends upon what he does, how you react to him, the position that he comes in, and so on. Once they get the basics down, so on moving, they do what are called forms. These are preset movements. Uh, you no, know, Art, do we have do we have enough room for form here? You think? Sure, sure, we can do it. Uh, Probably better off if you maybe start it this way. You want to start this work way? that way? Okay, yeah. Steve, just do a. It's my dojo. Here is very small. <laughs> Cheap rent. Cheap rent. <laughs> Cheap rent. Okay, Stephen, why don't you just do a, just a basic form number one, just facing this direction, and uh, you know, if you wherever you wind up, just don't worry about it. Just anytime you're ready. Okay, position. Okay, go. All this is, he's just practicing his basic techniques in a systematic sequence. This is a first basic form. Right? Just consists of block, punch. He's got to back up a little bit so he doesn't go off the stage. Good. There you go. Very, very simple. Most styles have this. I think you probably have something similar like this, right, Art? Pretty much the first same. Cut, the cut number one. Right. Basic number one. That's what we call it, too. <laughs> Good. Good, Steve. Thanks. Okay, and then gradually the forms as they go up the rank become more intricate, a little bit more involved. Uh, when they come to black belt level, then there's a certain number of forms that a student has to know. And for each black belt grade, there's a particular thing that uh, the student has to, uh, has to do. Uh, most schools have a systematic set of rank requirements that for the particular grades of different color belts, they would have to know. Uh, X number of techniques and so on. Uh, Steve, why don't you slide over here? Okay, out of way. Uh, X number of techniques for individual belts. In our school, we have a white belt, uh, a yellow belt, blue belt, green, purple, brown, and black. I think ours is pretty much the same, but I think I think you have a red belt in there too. Yeah, we got a red belt also. Right. So it's it's pretty similar. And most schools have the different color belts. What they serve as is an incentive for the students, so they get an idea of you know, setting a goal and going for that particular goal and working up. I think that uh, you have to be careful in that uh, a lot of people put too much emphasis on the belt. Uh, the belt is only as good as the person behind it. No matter what rank you have, uh, if the person is not training or not doing the techniques, then, you know, the belt is almost immaterial. So it serves as a, a basis, but it's not everything. It's, it's not everything. Let's, let's just word it that way, a nice gentle way to put it. Okay. Uh, probably what a lot of people have seen now with uh, some of the, the shows on TV, uh, there's things that uh, are called uh, ultimate fighting challenges and things like that where uh, people will do, two people will come together with no rules. And when they have no rules, basically like in the UFC, there's two things you can't do. You can't bite and you can't eye gouge. Now, it would seem to be that uh, you know, you'd have constant injury, but the people are usually trained very well, and 
there's submissions involved. So there's really not uh, as much damage as you would initially think. But what this has done is it's opened up certain areas and made uh, other martial arts, uh, art, martial artists rather, aware of specific maybe deficiencies, things that they should work with. Uh, groundwork has become very important. I know from being a wrestler, we always used to talk, and you're always very aware of groundwork, how important it was and how it ties in. So the way we teach it is we teach basically you have three distance lines when you fight. Fighting stance, Steve? And what's important about a distance line is this. Any type of fighting, whether it's military, where you're throwing a grenade over here, or you're working hand to hand, or shooting a missile, or empty hand fighting, it's who controls the distance. If you control the distance, you control the fight. Now, empty hand, you can control distance different ways. If I'm at what I call an outside distance line here, like this, I control the distance by how I kick. So what he has to do, he has to, as he moves in, he's got to move in and get past my kicking technique. So if I can keep him at the end of my legs, I'm controlling the distance, I'm controlling the fight. But if he moves in, right, and moves inside, and I have to use my hands, this is a middle distance line. So for here, right, I use a middle distance line coming in here, boom, like that. If we work in close, let's say that uh, my outside distance line and my middle distance line didn't work. We work in close. Well, in close, you have where you can use your knees, right, elbows, head, all different types of things, and then grappling and groundwork techniques. The groundwork techniques, there's holds involved, there's chokes, there's arm locks. Perhaps the difference that uh, uh, people are seeing, like the UFC, I believe a wrestler, it's uh, how many minutes or how many seconds on his back guard do you win? It's just two it's seconds? Just, no, it's actually as soon as the, the shoulder blades as soon are put as you, on the you ground, pin his boom, shoulders? Yeah, it's just a split second. Okay, split second, his shoulders are down, which is, which is absolutely terrific. But there's also perhaps some other things you can do. So we practice, uh, sometimes we'll practice just from the knees, the techniques from the knees. Something like, okay, on your knees here, right? Well, you just start off this way from your knees, and you start to work from your knees this way, and then you work the techniques. Now, what I'll do, I'll give you an idea of just like some basic holes you can work. Just, for instance, like a basic side hold this way, if you just want to control someone. Come over this way, Steve, so we stay in this, these people. Just a basic position here, right? Different ways to do this. Notice to control the arm coming under here. This leg should be underneath the deltoid to control. You can do it this way. Here, knee down, head down. It depends upon how he moves as to how you adjust. This way here enables him, if you don't have this tight, to come over and hook your leg and like climb over your back. But this way here, if I have control here, it's more difficult for him to move out. The general rule of thumb is if they control your upper body, you move your lower body. If they control your lower body, you move your upper body. Now from here, just on a hold, if he tries to move away, all I do is just control. Now from here, just to switch to another hold, all I have to do is bring my right leg under. Now, if you notice, I post this knee here. The reason I do that technically is that if I'm here, he can come out, right, wrap my leg. But if I keep my knee here, this way, this hand, on this side of his jaw now, I can hold him this way or I can hold this way. This way I have control. If I want to go over top, I can switch to here, come to here, come to here. It all depends upon how he moves as to what I do. Come on back in here, Steve, a little bit in the center. Okay, back down. Back down your back. Out of boy. <coughs> okay. So from these basic positions, there's things I can do. I can do arm locks. I can do chokes. Just for basic position here, right? Just from here, I can do an arm lock on his arm. I can do it this way here. Right. From here, I can choke. I can come back here. Uh, I can go to a position switch, come to here, come to here. And a natural thing when somebody gets here is they feel real uncomfortable. It looks like my microphone just slid down here, so we'll just take a second and uh, 
At least this cord has warmed up a little bit, you know? It's <laughs> old before. Okay. From here, the natural tendency is when someone gets here, they get frightened. That sense is they want to push up and push away from you. Very bad thing to do. Because as soon as somebody pushes up away, you okay, bud? Notice I place it right on the side of my hip bone, thumb facing up this way, here, here. I raise, you okay? Squeeze. Notice what's very important. I know this art does the same thing. When you work with students, you must control and you should have respect for each other. You leave your ego at the door. Because when you start doing things like this, once the joint is locked here, there's a chance of doing permanent damage. So you want to make sure that what you're doing, you know, is correct. Now let's say that Steve's on the bottom here. Come over here, Steve. Okay, he doesn't want to be here in a real fight. Right? He's got a problem. Okay. Come back here a little bit, Steve. Not a boy. I don't know, you got some crazy glue art? Well, I crazy. could take a stapler and staple it on you. As long as you staple it to my <laughs> knee, not to me. Okay. So here, I've got the leverage to punch him, elbow him, boom, headbutt him. He can't punch up here with power. But there's also escapes that someone can do out of here. Let's say that uh, Steve, okay, that way, Steve, right? Escape, right? He blocks, right? Turns me. Now, I'm on the bottom, back in here. This is a small dojo art, you know that? I know, I know, I'm working on it. <laughs> work on it, man, work on it. I want to take here. out the guy next door. And You're going to take the guy next expand, door? Okay. Yeah. This is not necessarily a bad position. I can bring him in, right? I can control him from here. He can use a lot of energy to get out. But as he tries to get out, right, as he pulls back, if you watch, see here, here, there, right? I can work this hand underneath this way, come this way. You okay, bud? Not a boy. So, being on your back is not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, some guys like to fight off their back. How about if you just turn the other angle that way there? Sure. Bit, so your head's on that angle because we'll get, yeah, we get a better shot from you okay. that way too. How's that? <clears throat> How's the position? That better? I think that's better, yeah, that's for better? everybody okay. at home. So the basic rule of thumb is you take what they give you. And if they give you an arm, you take an arm. If they give you a, a throat, you take the throat. If a leg, you take the leg. So here, again, it's just a matter of control. By having the person in the guard this way, you can control them here, right? And then they have to work out from here. And they're going to use energy to work out. Okay, why don't you demonstrate for us, because we've got to shoot to our match of the week, and we'll be right okay. back. So we'll be right back after this match of the week. Let's keep that going. What was that? Now show that to me again match of the week. In the yellow shirt, we have David Salberg, who's eight years old. He's fighting Billy Gershberg, who's also eight years old. Both of these young men are green belts in our academy. The referee is Sensei Michael Del Val. Nice hook kick by Billy. Good, your eyeballs up, hands up. Nice right hand, good counter punch by Dave. Sensei Quick. Deval right on the ball there. Ah! Nice round kick, Put your hands up. right hand your hands combination. Up. Good punches. Out here. Good punches. Your hands up. Circle around a little bit. Yeah. Good combination. Let's go. Looking good. Got to get our hands up a little bit on Dave. Nice front round kick there. Good reverse. Good reverse punch. Your hands up. Your hands up. Look around a little bit, fellas. Move the center. Work the center. Since Adele Val giving instructions, encouraging both people to get the hands up, get the defense up. Also going to get a pop on the old button. Watch the facial contact down here, will you? Nice right hand by Dave. Hands up, get those cheeks up too. Let's go. Lock and counter. Hands up, Billy. Those hands up. Gotta keep those hands up on Dave. Let's go. Come on, let's go. 30 seconds. 30 seconds left. Work the center. Let's go. Get those hands up. Watch the facial contact. No facial contact down here. 
nice counter punch by Dave. Nice right hand, nice right round kick there by Bill. Nice combination, good counter punch by Dave. There you go, come on. Got a couple seconds left. Nice right hand. Good fighting. Eight year olds right here. Facing each other, Bob. Give him a headgear. Hey, go shake hands. There you go. Bob. Oh, that looks oh, good. Oh, that looks feel good. That feel that Oh, uh, remember when you hit me down the night at school? Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> Hope you enjoy the match. We'll be right back after this message. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to another conclusion of Karate and You. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Uh, Master Martin, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. As good to see you as always, Art. One of my best buddies in karate. Keep up the good work. Keep up the good work. Thank you. I appreciate okay. that. You have a special upcoming event. Can I want to tell people at home about that? Uh, yes. Uh, Hoyler Gracie, who is the brother of Hoist Gracie, who has won uh, the first, uh, I think, two or three uh, UFCs, which are the ultimate fighting challenges, uh, will be coming to school again, uh, my school in Homedale at uh, the day after Thanksgiving, I think that's what, the 25th, 24th? 24th. Is it 24th, guys? Yeah, yeah 24th, uh, day after Thanksgiving. And anybody that's uh, interested, you know, just give the school a call. It's 264-8642. Uh, okay. And I just want to thank, you know, everybody. All right. Well, thanks for the compliments. Before we go anywhere, though, get the pencil and paper out. You've got to remind these people. Oh, they, okay. They, you know, pencil and paper or get a butter knife and gouge out the coffee table. What's that phone number again? 264 8642. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. I look forward to it. Steve, pleasure having you on the show. Anybody want to say hello to? I just want to thank Ms. Marm for being such a great teacher and thank you for having us on the oh, show. My pleasure. And yourself, big guy. Do the same. Like, thank you for having me here. Thank Mr. Martin for bringing okay. me. Okay. Want to say hello to anybody out there? Yes, yeah, so I like to say hello to my mother and father watching home. Okay. All right. Great job with them. Guys, good job. Keep me going. Good uh, job. Good work. This is Master Art Bynes and guests. Thank you for inviting us into your home. Remember that the biggest obstacle in life is yourself. Overcome it, you will achieve the greatest accomplishment of all. This can only be achieved, however, through a balanced education that pertains to knowledge of the mind, honesty in the heart. Come on, guys, get the arms up. Get them up. Get them up. Okay, everybody on this show. Yeah, everybody on this show. This is good luck. Let's no, go, Chad. Well, get well, them up. Get them up. How about Strengthen need? the body. Thank you. Have a happy, healthy, and safe week. Why don't you go out with a couple of those? If you're interested in learning more about our show, Karate and You, please contact Grandmaster Art Bynes at Karate and You at TooGoodTV.com. Art Bynes, Karate and You, dedicated to your achievement.